Hey everyone! Response to episode 1 of The Green Room has been amazing. More people than we ever could have hoped for have been reaching out to talk to us about their time with the Checo Pelican players. But it also means we have a ton of audio to sift through before we release our next full episode, which will focus on the 1990s. And we want to do that decade justice. So, we're taking our time to make the best episode possible. Until then, we have a shorter bonus episode for you, just in time for Valentine's Day. A note to listeners, due to distance, and COVID, everyone had to interview by phone for this episode, so we've captioned everything to help the hard of hearing. We'll have cleaner audio in the next episode. We hope you enjoy it, and we'll be back soon. Well, the first moment that I saw Kelly was at the theater. That was the uh, show where we had our first kiss. He, he has the most romantic proposal ever. She takes a break. We go have a baby. She comes back and misses, what, three rehearsals? Yeah. Comes back and keeps directing, finishes the show, gets it off the ground, opening weekend. It's a hit. And she didn't act like it phased her at all. A little song. A little dance. A little backstage romance. <laughs> This is The Green Room, Valentine's Day style. Bonus Episode 1, Backstage Romance. So we've been thinking about it, and there are a lot of couples at the Playhouse. People who met there, or through friends at the theater, and ended up falling in love. For the sake of full disclosure, we're also one of those couples. We've known each other since the first grade, but we reconnected during a show in 2014. We got together in late 2015, and we've been together ever since. We actually got engaged at the Packy Awards in 2020. For Valentine's Day, we wanted to celebrate love in the theater. So we talked to two married couples whose love blossomed at CPP. First, let's meet Ralph and Kelly Dickey. I've been involved for 10 years this June. I've been involved, I get, I really started about six months after Kelly did. They got married in September of 2018. September 8th, 2018, which <laughs> was in the middle of, uh, what show? Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd, which we actually adjusted our, our wedding date so that we wouldn't miss the show, <laughs> so our show dates would work. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They're so committed to theater, they planned their wedding around a show they were in. And we're lucky they do things like that, because we really rely on people like Ralph and Kelly. You name it, I... I built it, uh, or made it work, or make it go. <laughs> <laughs> They've been a stage tech team, building sets and stage managing together since they met a decade ago. Hmm. Well, the first moment that I saw Kelly was at the theater. I think that was January of 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, we first met there, got, didn't really get to know each other very well, just said hi. <clears throat> the next show was Annie Get Your Gun, and we got to know each other a bit better. Wait Until Dark was the next show I was stage managing. Ralph found himself on stage for that show. <laughs> they still remember their first kiss during a musical they were working on together. A funny thing happened on the way to the forum. They got engaged in December of 2017 during a production of Miracle on 34th Street. And of course, Ralph made the theater a part of his proposal. We all came out for a curtain call and took our bows. And the lights stayed up, which kind of threw me off a little bit. All of a sudden, Mike came on the, uh, the speaker. I turned around, and all of a sudden, there was Ralph right behind me, standing on one knee. The cool part <laughs> was, I, I, uh, I had about, I had a little a miniature role in it, in, uh, as st in stage manager, so I was already in a tuxedo every night. So it worked out <laughs> real good for me. <laughs> Less than a year later, they were married, and the entire theater family turned out for the wedding. Oh, it was so much fun. It was a good way. I, I liked our wedding. It was, uh, it was very comfortable. Comfortable is a good way of putting it. If you've ever spent any time around theater people, you'll know. They know how to throw a party. So, Kelly Dickey has a little brother, and his name is Stephen Scruggs. And like his sister... Steven Scruggs and his wife, Liska, started dating at the Playhouse. My first show was 2011, and uh, we involved pretty heavily until my last show in 2019. I guess it was a solid eight years. 
I'm Lisa Strads, and I was a part of CTP from 2007 to uh, last show I did was in 2019. They hit it off during a summer production of Treasure Island in 2011. And my friend Sean Paul, he was like, hey, why don't you come down and check out the theater sometime? I'm like, yeah, all right. I mean, sure, I'll give it a shot. And I came down just to see it, and, well, there she was. And it turns out she was assistant directing for the first show I was coming out to. And he says that I wasn't interested for a while, but, <laughs> but lies. I thank that show a lot for kind of getting the ball rolling for us. They often work as a team on the acting and directing side of things. Literally just about everything. I've directed, assistant directed, stage managed, acted, produced. Uh, I've just tried to do a little bit of everything if I can. I've acted in shows, I've directed a show, um, done crew and stage managing and costuming. <laughs> and one of their favorite shows to work on together was a recent one. Well, I'm a little biased, but it's got to be Next to Normal, the one I directed. Next to Normal a musical drama that ran in the fall of 2019 and took home a ton of Packy Awards, including Best Overall Production. The very first time I heard it, I've wanted to direct it for years now. Being able to get the opportunity to direct it at CPP was incredible. The cast worked so incredibly hard on that show, and it was absolutely so much fun to work on it with my husband. But their relationship was on full display in 2019 during the ultimate play about love, William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Being able to play the title characters as husband and wife was just so much fun and so beautiful. I had it in my head I was going to make some sort of joke at Packy's and I just didn't get it figured out in time, but something along the lines of, I don't know, most Romeos only get one night with their, their darling Juliet, but I... I get many more than that. And technically speaking, Steven and Liska weren't the only two Scruggs on stage during that show. While Liska was playing Juliet, she was also pregnant with her youngest son, Ronan. I happened to be in my first trimester of pregnancy while playing Juliet, which is wonderfully and horribly ironic considering she only gets that one night with Romeo and then dies. Steven, Liska, and their two sons live a few hours away now, but they miss theater a lot, and they're hoping to get back into it, along with their kids, as soon as the pandemic is over. Look, we can make all the jokes in the world about backstage romance. It's a huge trope in movies and plays about theater, after all. I mean, just look at the plots of Moulin Rouge or Shakespeare in Love. Now, to be clear, we would never recommend dating your fellow cast members in a professional setting. But things work a little bit differently in community theater. It's a place where people meet to socialize, to appreciate art, and it builds bonds by allowing people to be vulnerable and encouraging them to work together. And Steven and Liska and Kelly and Ralph, they know better than anyone. There's just something about that kind of community space that can help love blossom in ways that we might not expect anywhere else. Theater forms, like just even outside of romantic relationships, theater forms bonds that are really, really long lasting. Like the bonds I have with so many people I've met through theater and done theater with are so much more long lasting and strong than half of, half of my family members. The whole experience of being a part of a show and doing something in the theater, working with uh, a group of people who are all kind of depending on each other, it's, it's the kind of environment that really lends itself to people relying on and trusting each other. And it, it forms you know, friendships and, and bonds that are stronger than you'll find in many other places. There's always that magic of, of theater that comes on and you know it's uh I, when you flip up when you turn on the lights and you you start hearing them all just you know go get get power to bring the lights up and you hear that and you feel the heat of the lights come on there, there's a magic that's created with that and jason and i have to say we think the word magic is a pretty good way to describe that feeling happy valentine's day everyone we'll be back with a new episode in just a few weeks He has the most romantic proposal ever.
and we decided to go to the Oregon Caves uh, as our anniversary celebration. So we went out there, found out they do a thing called the candlelight tour, where they turn off all the lights in the caves, and all the only light you have during the tour is the lanterns everyone carries. And partway through the tour, they tell us, like, we're over what they call the River Six, and they have us all blow out our lanterns and sit in the dark for a little bit. And then one by one, the tour guide relights the lanterns. Well, when he started relighting the lanterns, all of a sudden I see he's on his knee with a ring out in the middle of these caves. And it was just so romantic. 